Welcome to the Change Within Podcast. This is Gerard Uselli here. We are on episode 20. I can't believe we have had up to 20 episodes so far, considering all the walks of life that have been on our platform, expressing how change has impacted their lives. This person has had 25 years of longevity in the film industry, an incredible person as far as how he's done his work over time done a lot of stuff in the nonprofit space. But nonetheless, let me introduce you, David Jassy of DMJ Studios. David, how are you today? Thank God I'm terrific, Gerard. How are you? I'm doing great. So something I like to ask all of my guests who have been on the show so far is what your childhood was like growing up. Well, I, you know, I thank God every day that I have great parents. They're still alive. They're in their 90s especially when I see what other people have gone through. I was very fortunate and had a terrific upbringing with very calm parents who could probably teach classes on parenting. And I was uh, kind of raised also by two lovely sisters. So the background was very family oriented and very strong. And I must say, as far as how certain things might have come into your life in your childhood, based on your background now, I was curious to know What was the first movie that inspired you to get into video production? Well, it just so happens that uh, originally I went to college for like engineering and I thought I was going to take one of these uh, white collar jobs. And while I was in college, uh, I met up with this woman who worked. I said, Anita, why are you so tired this morning? Mm. She said, I was up all night working on the newspaper. And I go, really? You work on the newspaper? And to make a long story short, I was able to be a photographer for the university newspaper. And then I became an editor. Then I became director of photography on the university newspaper. And all of a sudden it opened up a a new world to me. When I got out of college, I worked one day as a photographer, didn't like it. And I moved over to TV. And my first job was CNN. I was a cameraman, an engineer, an editor, and a producer. So uh, as far as what inspired me, watching TV when I grew up was probably the biggest inspiration. But then my first job at CNN where I got to do everything from being a cameraman, an editor, a producer, and a director in my four years. That's what really got me going in this business. And I must say, just as like a quick note, something that really makes people valuable in their career choices and how far they get is not only what they say no to, but their willingness to understand what they're capable of doing. And it seems that you've had that platform to really push yourself to new heights. So just a quick note on this, what would be some advice that you would tell people who don't have as much confidence in themselves to push harder? Well, that's an interesting question. First of all, you have to work very hard on confidence and say positive things to yourself and add ask yourself positive questions to get yourself on the right track. And you have to stay physically fit. All these things uh, contribute to positivity and your mental health. So first of all, take care of yourself. That's number one. And then the other thing is, um, for me, uh, I always wanted to do more. I was loving what I was doing. So I, I used to, when I got to CNN to set up the studio, at 5.30 in the morning, and I used to take a four o'clock train to get there. I set up the studio from 5.30 to six, and then from six to 6.25, before the 6.30 show where I was doing studio camera, I was practicing editing. And then I would do camera from 6.30 to seven, and there was a break, and when everybody else went out to breakfast, because I had had my breakfast at five o'clock in the morning, I went back into the edit room, and I went into the control room. So liking what you do, showing up early, persevering, and saying yes will definitely help you grow your career. What a wonderful sentiment. And I must say, so kind of going into that point as well, as you were starting your career, what was the first project that defined your concept to completion approach that you've branded on DMJ? Well, um, it's an interesting question. you know, it reminds me of when I used to work for the my first two freelance clients. In other words, I used to work from 5.30 in the morning to 1.30 afternoon at my CNN shift. 
And then 1.30 till, I don't know, 7.30 at night, I used to take on freelance work until that would take over for my job. And those, two of those jobs were video fashion, which was producing uh, beauty, makeup, runway, model pieces from around the world, and a cooking show, What's Cooking with Burt Wolf on CNN. Both those show producers handed me the tapes and said, make shows. Here's the London collections. Here's some interviews. They gave me basic parameters. And they said, here, make a show. And the cooking show was the same thing. And in those days, it wasn't nonlinear. It was on tape. And it was from machine to machine. You had to really be good at cutting and telling a story. And she would be like, here are the tapes. Make the stories. So after those two clients, when I started to do work for my um, direct-to-business, not through an agency, we always downloaded from them who their audience was, what the messaging is supposed to be, and then we took over from there. And that's what we're doing to this day, because anybody can make a video. The idea is to make the right video. And to make the right video that's going to get results, you have to start with the concept. It's not about just making a video. It's about making the right video. So that's how that concept, the completion idea took root. I, will, I also must say that probably defines a lot of your success to where you are today with, G, uh, with DMJ. And to that point, kind of within your growing process, especially early on, what were, some, what were kind of like some growing pains that kind of pushed you a little bit over the edge? And how did you persevere from that as you pretty much have done throughout your career? Well, growing pains. I think in the beginning for everybody, you know, you're going to have to hear a lot of no's. I wouldn't say I heard a lot of no's, but I certainly worked on a lot of budgets and proposals. And then maybe instead of going with the best, which I always considered myself, meaning start with the strategy, come up with an ending, cover everything. Sometimes there are people who do it for a lot less and a lot quicker than I am. So you didn't always get all the jobs. So maybe that was difficult. And um, what other growing pains? Uh, learning to delegate. Interesting. Uh, in, order to, in, order to, in order to grow a business, you know, I recently heard in the last two years a, a statement that said, um, if you do things by yourself, you do it faster. If you do it with other people, you do it further. So that is a pretty good definition of the growing pains. When you do it by yourself, it's easier. You can do it faster. And when you start to bring on other people, it doesn't go as quickly. But in the end, you'll be able to go further. So I'm working more now than ever to do just that and get over that, get out of that comfort zone of doing it in a smaller way. And doing it and collaborating with uh, other very talented people. Because as we just said, you do it yourself faster, you do it with others, you can go further. Sure. And I guess a follow up question to that is, what would you consider your personality type to be as a leader? Um, I'd say the number one thing is probably empathy and sympathy and appreciation for people. Um, you know, I was recently shooting on a set in California California, and it was actually even during the pandemic and in the middle of the shoot with this Hollywood star we were fortunate to work with somebody who's been in movies and so forth in the middle of the shoot um, there was noise outside and I, and I went to the door and some bike messenger comes in and hey man what are you doing and he comes <laughs> on the set and she freaked out and, and she rightfully left and he sits down in a, in a director's chair next to me. There are a couple chairs there. He starts having a conversation with me. And I spoke to him very warmly, nicely, accepting. I listened to what the man had to say. He said, I like your style, dude, blah, blah, blah. And after a couple of minutes of being nice and listening, he walked up and got out. And, and everybody was very relieved. And the same thing goes being a director on the set with, with the talent, the client says, I want my script. The talent says, I want my script. I'm not reading what he wrote. And as a good director, you have to uh, be accommodating to everybody and not freak out. So um, I think you asked me what are the personality traits uh, or of, the, of a leader. And uh, it's the ability, I think, to be able to listen to other people 
and properly treat everybody the right way and try and keep everybody happy. Sure. And kind of following more of the creative aspects, especially within your nonprofit work, which I found remarkably astounding. So what does telling a story mean to you when you're working with these nonprofits as you've raised over $100 million through your own content for so many organizations? So first of all, I want to thank you for your kind words. And second of all, I want to make sure we clarify. What that means is when you're collaborating with clients for you know 25 years and have done hundreds of films with clients, together, we raise yeah. the money. So uh, I want to clarify with that. Now, the next thing is you asked me about uh, storytelling. So I always go by the model of a story that comes from the heart, touches the heart. So anytime anybody um, is telling me a real life story, that's always going to be very effective and very engaging. I tried to do that a couple of times when we were speaking and give you an actual story on the set and give you an actual story when I used to go to work. It engages people. So when we're putting together films, whenever we can, we try and tell a story. And then the next idea is a story that comes from the heart, touches the heart. So very often the first time I'm getting somebody's story, it's gonna be more like ingredients. I did this, I did this, I did that, I did that. But what you really have to do is go back and dig in again and say, oh really, what was that like? Was that hard for you? Similar to what you're doing here, you go back and you ask another question. But you know, the first answer is usually like, God forbid we shouldn't know from it, somebody gets sick. I found a lump, but, but it's pretty cliche and pretty predictable. If you wanna tell a good story and you wanna pull in your audience, you're gonna go back and you're gonna ask them what it was like that day, paint a picture of that day and have people tell real stories from their heart. It's gonna be a video brochure every day. So when we're doing clients to this day, 20 minutes before I got on the show, me and my editor, we have the same conversation. We know we have to do a certain amount of information about the organization, but people will go to bed. People go to sleep. If it's just like a video brochure, we do this, we do that. So it's always important to do your best to tell a story and bring out the emotion in people. Because when you bring out the emotion in people, it'll bring out the emotion in the audience. Absolutely. And also in retrospect, especially considering the early stages of the pandemic, the film industry, as we all know, changed inevitably. I wanted to know from your perspective how you kept yourself busy during that process of the last year. Well, I have to admit that a lot of my colleagues have bigger companies than me and work with bigger projects very often. And that like totally shut down. And the, the genre that we work in, especially in the nonprofit world, the nonprofit world couldn't shut down because they're helping all the people who needed help. So we did a film on domestic violence during the pandemic. We did an animated short on how to deal with autistic children during the pandemic. Pandemic. Um, typically, we've done a lot of videos for these big fundraising galas that everybody knows shut down. So what happened? They went virtual. So that meant that now people weren't doing a live event for an hour. They were doing an hour of video. And when you come from a broadcast television background like I do and my associates do, putting together an hour of TV is pretty easy. So we produced an hour to an hour and a half virtual event for a client, for example. So thank God we were actually busier this, this year than ever before, because video is exploding. Of course. As you know, it's exploding. Well, look, look, it's everywhere. Look where it's gotten with, with me with me doing this type there of podcast, go. having the video perspective. It, it is kind of like that sense of like empathy as far as how this kind of came to fruition. But nonetheless... I wanted to ask you as your final question, as I also like to ask all of my guests, what is the biggest change you want to see for yourself this year? Um, losing 10 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, I spoke about um, delegation and going further. So the biggest change I'm looking for is uh, delegating. Thank God I'm working as we speak right now, as soon as we get off. We're working on about four or five different videos, collaborating with a lot of filmmakers right at this very moment as we speak. 
and I, I want to do that more. Early on in my career, I was nervous about giving it out to other people because uh, it doesn't always come out the way the client wants and you have to do it again. And, you know, in our business, if you send somebody to edit a video and they work for a day and they go in the wrong direction, it could be a problem. But the benefits far outweigh the shortcomings. And in the past, I was uh, weary about bringing on other people. And now I'm more weary about potentially doing the projects myself or too small of a team. So the growth for this year is bringing on other people. And the growth with God's help for these people is also working on a feature film, which we're planting the, the seeds for as well. Perfect. And David, I wish you all the best in making those changes for yourself. That does include that does conclude the 20th episode of the Change Within Podcast. David, thank you very much for joining us today. And if, for those who don't know, you can please find the Change Within Podcast on Anchor, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. David, have a great night. Thanks so much, Gerard. It's a pleasure talking with you. Absolutely. Same to you as well.